I married many men, a ton of them, because I was untrue to none of them, because I bumped off every one of them to keep my love alive. In this song from the musical Connecticut Yankee, every verse is a woman's proud confession to killing a husband to keep from having to lower her romantic standards. It comes to mind as I reflect on romantic humanism. The words humanity, humankind, humane stir positive feelings for our species. Sometimes we extend these positive feelings to nature as if it's kind too. More often we treat humans as a breed apart from nature. I think of romance as the dream of a happily ever after that lives in all of us. Romantic humanism is the dream of continuous progress for our species towards an ideal, a dream that has lived in each of us since childhood enchantment with fairy tales and in sacred texts like the Bible where the good guys live happily ever after, either in heaven or in utopia on earth. Lives in philosophy too, with dreams of finally figuring out what it's all about and in science solving all our problems, as in utopian sci-fi. We have different, often conflicting, ideas about how to reach the ideal. We argue about what path will get us there, and even about what utopia would look like. For a while, it seemed like we were making progress towards it, that the arc of history bends towards justice and peace on Earth for all humankind. But these days, we seem to be in pretty rough waters. We can't help but wonder if we're getting closer to utopia or discovering, much to our disappointment, that the last few centuries were a bait and switch. It looked like things were getting better for a minute, and then no, they're getting worse suddenly. Romantic humanism fuels our hopeful effort to make things better. Either that or our hopes get crushed and we get cynical about humanity, sneering at our own species as if we're a cancer. I begin to suspect that as times get tougher, our romantic humanism adds insult to injury. Not only will we suffer the consequences of, let's say, climate chaos and maybe extinction, we'll feel like failures because we could have saved ourselves but didn't. It's like the devil's bargain people make when they decide that they can simply will their cancer away. Sure, it can be motivating, but if it doesn't cure the cancer, they're double losers. Not only is their cancer terminal, but they failed to save themselves when they had a perfectly easy chance. Insult to injury. What's absent from most of our speculations about whether humans are romantically good or cynically bad is any scientific examination of what we really are. For that, we'd have to relax the idealism and look squarely at ourselves. I get why we're tempted to avoid it. It could dash the hopes we rely on to make humankind better. Visualize romantic humanism and you will achieve it. For example, maybe we started out ideal and lost our way. If so, we should be able to find our ways back. Fall from grace myths give us hope. Truth told, we didn't fall from grace. We evolved from slime and still have plenty of slime in us. We are primates who evolved language and technology that may be beyond us to handle. Compassion is new a function of being able, through language, to put ourselves in each other's shoes in some detail. The norm in nature is a kind of thoughtless ruthlessness, looking out for you and yours. Thoughtless because without language, there's behavior and an animal's emotion, but no abstract concepts, like caring about the species. By nature's standards, a tyrant is a highly evolved, super-duper predator, Duper because with language, tyrants can rationalize any predatory behavior, and with technology, they've got huge leverage. Nature is not a god selecting the best species and ensuring that they survive. There is no higher power rooting for us. It's just us fumbling through, trying to fit reality while trying to feel good about ourselves, which is hard once you got language. That voice in our heads that they're in no other creatures, whispering, am I okay? I'm not okay. I'm great. I'm terrible. I'm a god. I'm vile. Am I okay? The good news is that we didn't make us. You didn't choose who you are off some a la carte prenatal menu. 
You are the current product of a long line of organisms that each struggled for its own existence. Our kind made it this far. There's no guarantee we'll make it further. Perhaps the problem isn't a lack of ambition, but too much. Language enables us to idealize in ways other creatures can't. With words, we can idealize anything. Perfect partners, perfect utopias, heaven hereafter, our own species. Idealize without internal coherence. Is heaven a place where you're surprised and delighted every day? Yes. For all eternity? Yes. To idealize erroneously is human, as is being unforgiving of our failure to be divine. When things get tough, people tend to idealize harder. The anxious set their sights not on okayness, but on enlightenment. The crushed fall prey to utopian cults. Humanity spirals out when people get so desperate, they lurch into the laps of tyrants posing as ideal. Romantic humanism is largely self-romance. If I can imagine the ideal, then I must be ideal, and everyone should start acting like me now. Follow my lead already, damn it. If I just educated people, they'd want to be like me, and if they don't, they're evil. Humanity's language-fueled and fooled ability to idealize does us harm however we slice it. It fills us with ungrounded hope or bitter cynicism. I happen to be a human, so here's my idealization. What if we relegated romantic humanism and self-idealization to fiction, enjoying our flights of fancy but always returning to reality after? What if we embrace what we really are, these mid-sized mammals juggling these newfangled power tools, language and technology, trying to save ourselves before it's too late, with no higher power out there ensuring peace on Earth? What if we did the best we could, and if we failed, went down knowing that humankind didn't create itself any more than did any other critter? There'd still be plenty of injury like that suffered by any of the 95% of all species that ever existed that went extinct, but not the heartbreaking insult or the cynical bitterness of the spurned romantic. Maybe by eliminating the devil's bargain insult side effects of romantic humanism, we'd calm down and face reality more productively. You can say I'm a dreamer, <laughs> But I'm not the only one.